A sustainable vegetarian burger that tastes just like meat? It's not impossible, but it is the Impossible Burger. Impossible Foods was founded by a biochemist named Patrick Brown. He assembled a team of scientists of all sorts who took a unique approach to building the perfect veggie burger by engineering it from the molecular level. Instead of telling everyone why they needed to become vegetarian, they wanted to make a burger that just tasted better than a beef burger and then let people make their own choices. So they started with the things that make a burger delicious – texture, flavor, and that sizzle when it's cooking on the grill. They wanted to find a way to recreate all that with plant-based materials and decided to do it with some scientific research into what makes beef burgers so good. The team's specialties included yeast genetics, nutrition, and molecular chemistry. Simply put, they're scientists rather than chefs who have set out to engineer the perfect burger. As Patrick Brown revealed in a Medium article, he and his team spent about six years studying meat on a molecular level to figure out how it all comes together to create something that humans have been craving since we discovered hunting and fire. They discovered that there's one single molecule that's responsible for making meat taste so good, and it's called heme. Heme is a protein in hemoglobin, the pigment that carries oxygen through the bloodstream. It also helps in the process of turning calories into energy, and that means there's a lot of it in animal tissues. When those tissues are turned into food, it's heme that gives meat that distinctive flavor. Heme is also present in plants, and there are all different kinds. Brown's team tested various types of plant-based heme until they found one that was similar enough to animal-based heme, as they settled on a protein extracted from the roots of legumes. Then, all they had to do was find a way to extract heme from plants and put it into their veggie burger. We were the first to discover that heme is what makes meat taste like meat. Let's face it, most veggie burgers just don't have that same firm texture that a beef burger does, and they definitely don't have that same meaty taste. So how does heme change that? Basically, soy roots contain a version of heme that has a similar molecular structure to the version of heme in animal tissue. Soy doesn't have nearly as much of it, though, so the scientific geniuses at Impossible Foods found a way to take the genetic codes from soy-based heme and insert it into a variety of yeast. They then feed the yeast to get it to multiply, which results in heme on a grand scale without the environmental impacts of raising and slaughtering cows. That's only half the story, though. In order to connect the rest of the puzzle pieces, the team cooked real beef and exposed it to something called a gas chromatography mass spectrometry system. That isolated each and every molecule and compound present that created the smells of cooking beef. It then gave them the structure of the burger they needed to put the heme into to make sure the Impossible Burger also had that meaty aroma. In a 2018 interview with Time, Patrick Brown pointed out that throughout human history, people have had to discover what's good and bad to eat. And that's pretty much what he's doing now, just in a lab. Still, there are debates about whether or not Impossible Burgers are safe. The FDA has spent years going over the materials supplied by Impossible Foods, and in 2018, they reaffirmed their findings that the cooked burger is generally recognized as safe. But that wasn't the end of it. Since heme lends a red color to the burger, they were now required to formally register it as a color additive, adding another layer to the approval process. Additionally, Impossible Foods, the FDA, and an expert panel have produced a 1,000-page petition exploring everything from potential allergens to the safety of individual proteins. Ultimately, everyone has agreed that the Impossible Burger is indeed safe. However, registering heme as a color additive may open the product up to more questions, more tests, and more opposition. One of the primary goals of Impossible Foods is creating sustainable, environmentally friendly meat alternatives. So they hired Qantas, a firm that studies corporations and organizations to determine their sustainability, to take a look at their environmental impact compared to beef production. Beef accounts for about 3% of our caloric intake but it's responsible for about half of all agricultural greenhouse gases and nearly half of the world's land use. In the food system, a cow is just an incredibly inefficient prehistoric technology. In comparison, the meat alternative of the Impossible Burger used 87% less water and 96% less land. It also produced 89% fewer greenhouse gases and resulted in 92% fewer water pollutants. Additionally, there are no manure emissions. In general, that's a major reduction in energy usage, not just from the cattle themselves, but also from growing the crops you need to feed them with. So yes, Impossible Foods is quite sustainable, and that's good news for all of us. The Impossible Burger might be good for the planet, but is it good for you? 
The basic ingredients include soy protein, sunflower oil, yeast extract, potato protein, and a bunch of vitamins and nutrients. When you look at the nutritional information charts, an Impossible Burger actually looks pretty similar to a 90% lean beef burger. Both patties contain 240 calories, around the same amount of fat, and have roughly the same percentage of nutrients like zinc and niacin. Impossible Burgers are lower in protein but higher in fiber, and they're also higher in vital nutrients like vitamin B12, thiamine, and iron. And the latter isn't just regular iron, it's heme iron, which is more readily absorbed by the body. Plus, this burger provides an extra dose of vitamins that are missing from many vegetarian and vegan diets. But there are some downsides to the Impossible Burger. Part of that has to do with the fact that it hasn't really been studied in depth, so long-term effects remain unknown. There are also concerns over potential allergic reactions, as a soy allergy is one of the eight most common food allergies found in both children and adults. Furthermore, the Impossible Burger is high in sodium and contains added preservatives, fillers, and flavorings that are all designed to help mimic the taste and texture of real beef. And they're really just a processed food. So, does the Impossible Burger really live up to the hype by actually tasting like beef? It depends on whom you ask. According to CNET reporter and vegetarian Joan E. Salzman, it was so much like real meat that it grossed her out to the point where she just couldn't bring herself to eat more than a few bites. As she noted, that's also a compliment, I think. In January 2019, Digital Trends praised the taste, texture, and smell of the recently redesigned Impossible Burger, declaring the new Impossible Burger is the most impressive thing on display at CES 2019. On the other hand, a review by Grub Street was less thrilled, though only slightly. They admitted that not only did the burger look like the real thing, but it didn't have any of that crumbly texture so many veggie burgers have. They stressed, however, that while most meat eaters would definitely be able to tell the difference between the two in a blind taste test, they would still highly recommend giving one a try. It's got the grilled taste and everything. The version of the Impossible Burger that was rolled out in 2019 was actually the second official recipe. The difference all comes down to the heme. In order to be used, heme has to be bound to a protein. The original Impossible Burger used wheat protein, but there were a few problems. The biggest involved texture and gluten. The original Impossible Burger couldn't be shaped into serving sizes like meatballs without crumbling. The wheat-based protein also meant that it wasn't gluten-free, but both of those problems were solved when the company overhauled the recipe with soy protein. So, will there eventually be a third version? Patrick Brown says it's highly likely, and one of the big changes they're hoping to realize is better affordability. In fact, the cow is not even trying anymore. When Impossible Foods first launched the Impossible Burger in 2016, it aimed for buzz and social cachet before reaching for widespread accessibility. It initially offered the burgers to high-end eateries such as David Chang's New York restaurant Momofuku Nishi and the critically acclaimed Jardiniere in San Francisco. Only after these tastemakers gave it their seal of approval did Impossible Foods expand its distribution to chain restaurants. White Castle was among the first to announce that they were taking their Impossible Burger sliders nationwide. That big reveal came in September 2018 after an initial trial run in 140 locations. Then, in April 2019, two big fast food chains announced that they were adding Impossible Burgers to their menu as well. This included the Impossible Whopper at Burger King, as well as Mexican restaurant Qdoba, where the plant-based meat has become a staple ingredient in many of the menu offerings. Cracker Barrel also recently announced that it was adding Impossible Sausage as an option along with regular sausage, a move that was met by howls of outrage from the chain's carnivorous fans. I draw the line at plant-based liver and onions. If they do plant-based <laughs> liver and onions, I'm out of here, I'm I done. But now, you don't even have to go to a restaurant to enjoy Impossible Foods. In 2019, the company began selling its uncooked burgers in supermarkets, and demand and distribution have grown since then. Their products are available at the likes of Wegmans, Walmart, Albertsons, and more. In short, if you want to try Impossible Foods right now, you won't have to go very far. It's probably just a short walk away. Impossible Meat isn't the only company responding to the growing consumer demand for environmentally sustainable and realistic meat substitutes. It's not even the first company to do so, as its closest competitor Beyond Meat was founded back in 2009, while Impossible launched in 2011. Both companies offer burgers and sausages intended to be compelling enough to entice curious carnivores, and both have attracted celebrity investors. But there are also significant differences between the two companies and their products. First off, their base ingredients are different. 
Impossible Foods' ground beef substitute is based on soy and potato protein and gets its meat-like red color from a plant-based preparation of heme. Meanwhile, Beyond Meat's primary base is a combination of pea, mung bean, and rice protein colored with beet juice extract. Additionally, according to a 2022 analysis by Thrillist, Impossible's meat patties taste more like real beef than those offered by Beyond Meat, though the latters are still tasty in their own right and the company's product lines also differ. Besides its ground beef substitute, Beyond Meat focuses on prepared meats such as broths, jerky, and meatballs, while Impossible focuses more heavily on basics such as Impossible ground beef and pork. As Impossible Foods grows as a company, its products are becoming not only easier to find, but also more affordable. This steady growth has reportedly allowed it to take advantage of new economies of scale, which has in turn led the company to pass its savings on to consumers. Additionally, Impossible Foods is also exploring other ways to make its products more affordable to engage new customers. A major step towards this goal is their recent partnership with grocery store chain Kroger. Under this deal, Kroger will not only carry Impossible Foods branded products, but also collaborate with the company on the creation of its own line of private label meat alternatives. This matters for a couple of reasons. For one, it shows the company is seriously committed to expanding its reach, even if it means lower profit margins. Second, it brings Impossible Foods closer to its goal of making the price point of its products competitive with meat, which the company hopes will encourage cost-conscious consumers to give them a chance. So if you've been meaning to take the Impossible Plunge, you've now got plenty of options to do so.